Greetings from Bilbao, the last stop on my tour. Uh, while I'm here in this nice quiet room, I would like to talk about using a couple of machines uh, to help your playing. And the first uh, is the tuning machine, and I'd like to talk about tuning the cello. Um, we should all have a digital tuning machine in this day and age. The one I have is made by Korg. It's very small. It fits in my pocket. I can keep it backstage uh, in my uh, tuxedo pocket. But very importantly, it shows you what pitch you're playing. It identifies a pitch. It will play sound. And it enables you to calibrate the pitch to 440, 441, 442. And it also enables you, if you're playing an ensemble, to coordinate your tuning really exactly with the other members of the ensemble without even having to do it by ear. Sometimes it's very difficult to tune backstage because it's noisy, and if you have one of these tuners, you can be sure when you walk out on stage the cello is really in tune. Um, these machines function on the principle of even-tempered pitch. In other words, uh, they are pinpointing the pitches mathematically so that every half step is the same distance apart. Um, it may not be, according to some people, the most musical way to, to play in tune, but it is the most consistent and is certainly the easiest to deal with in ensemble situations. And it's a very simple process. You turn the machine on, you play, the, you play your A string, and if it's really right, the needle goes to the middle. what pitch you're playing. It will read out the name of the note. And the needle should hit the middle for all four strings. And it's really, really as simple as that. Um, the other thing that you need to do when you tune is to tune aggressively. Uh, I, if you hear people tuning, especially violinists who use the pegs a lot, if they tune up and down, and it's very soft, more often than not what will happen is it will, it will become out of tune the first time the string is hit hard. So what I like to do, what you see uh, fiddle players doing a lot, is just, if you're going to tune up and down or whatever, give the string a pull, because that will pull it across the top of the bridge um, to its proper tension. Sometimes if the top of the bridge is not very uh, smooth, the string can get caught on the bridge, and if you don't pull it, well, the first time you play loud on the stage, it will pull the string out of tune and, and will be flat. And if you have trouble with your strings slipping over the bridge, this is something to do anytime, uh, anytime you change a string, or even just to maintain your instrument. Take the string off, look underneath where it is, and take a sharp pencil and put some lead in the groove where your string goes because this will smooth the passage of the string over top of the bridge. So, see it slips flat. And now, stage. And finally, tune backstage, use these things, use them aggressively, and make sure your instrument is really in tune when you go out on stage. And don't tune on stage, especially when you first walk out, because the last thing any composer wants before you hear their great pieces sounds like that on stage. If you have to tune between movements, tune very quietly. You can just tap the strings like that. You don't that. And if you're in a quartet, don't tune individual strings uh, to individual members on stage. It's the most painful and unmusical thing you could possibly do on stage. So I hope that's helpful. And if you're in an ensemble like a string quartet, especially if you're the cellist, you have to set the pitch on the bottom. Get yourself one of these things. Practice with it. It's your responsibility as the cellist. And if you want to have a group that gets along really well, everybody should get a tuner, not only a digital tuner, but perhaps the same tuner. That way you're sure that they're calibrated absolutely exactly the same. And uh, pretty soon we'll talk about the metronome.